This is Liz. Welcome to my little urban homestead. Well, the other weekend I had a long sewing weekend. This weekend I'm having a long preserving weekend. I've already done the um, hipped potatoes yesterday and today it's pinto beans, pressure canning pinto beans. Now there's two packs in here and They've been soaking overnight. So what needs to be done now? Whatever your pack size, if you want to make a pound, uh, I think there's two pound in here, all together of dried pinto beans. But the first thing you do with them now is, once they've soaked overnight, Is I'm giving them a good rinse off. So there's the bowl. We've sat the water. We've sat in overnight. Now I do know you can do these as a no soak method, but I'm doing it as per my Presto manual, which says basically. Cover them in cold water, leave them in a cold place 12 18 hours, and then rinse, which is exactly what I'm doing. So now I'm going to put some water over them, bring it to a boil, and then simmer them for 30 minutes while the pinto beans are having their 30 minutes simmer I'm going to go with my lids because as you know I uh, mainly use tattle lids so I've got out sufficient to fill my canner because possibly it is going to fill my canner and I always get out the exact same amount of rings plus two just in case one of them that I pull out is a bit stretched or anything and it's old, it cannot be used properly. When I sort them out, these that are very, very stiff, they're not as pliable as these, it's quite stiff. I put to one side. Those I will save just in case I cannot get any more gaskets because I don't know exactly how many times they've been used they might do a good seal, they might not they are there as a backup I have backup new gaskets and new leads not many but some but they're a backup to my backup so now the water's boiled so I'll put my leads in and they'll Happily boil away for quite a few minutes. Just before I'm ready to can up the beans, I will put these in the boiling water and turn the heat off. So the gaskets will be nice and ready for me. I am also gathering together anything else I will need. Obviously the jar lifters and my tongs for getting the tackle lids out. I will need a funnel, my deep bubbly and a spoon, you never know if I've taken anything out, but I put them there, they're ready for me. I've got a heat pad to put my saucepan that will be extremely hot come off the stove and want to put the, the jar on. I've also got my bag of rings 
to hand. So I'm all set. I'm just waiting for the beans now. My jars have been washed and sitting in hot water in the sink and everything else is ready and to hand. So I'm now filling the jars up to about an inch headspace. Because these have been soaking overnight, they should they will still take up some liquid but not shed loads. <laughs> I have some boiling water here that I'm tapping up to the inch headspace. Now the bubble. Check my head space. It's a little bit high and that's very high. So I said the plastic spoon might come in handy and it has. So we can take out some of the water. Check again, still too low, and um, still too high rather the water is. And that one was a bit high. So that should be right now. Yep, my headspace is right. I've got some white vinegar here on a paper towel and wipe around the rim. Whoops, my hands shaking. And while you're doing that, you're also having a second check as to whether you've got any cracks or anything on your jaws because you, you won't get a good seal there, you won't get a seal at all. One tattlet and ring on. Another tattlet and ring on. And I do have a tendency of doing things in twos. So there's the first one on. And with the tattlers, I do it until the jar starts moving. And that is sufficient for it. And I put these in the canner. and carry on doing some more. I have got pinto beans and chickpeas to do today. So I'll get the can loaded up now. Well, it's not a full can load. There's eight jars of pinto beans in the bottom and four jars of um, chickpeas in the top. So, I should have actually done extra uh, chickpeas, but never mind. So I'm now going to put the lid on. Always do your checks that your ring is fine. Your overpressure plug at the back drops easily. And check through the vent hole to see that you can see light. I can and blow through it as well. Put your carrot lid on as it says there's an arrow on one of the handles and on the lid. Line those two up and as it says in the manufacturers the manual press down slightly and twist and that will lock it into place. So now we're bringing that up to temperature. So slowly does it. There's no rush. We'll get there eventually. 
the water that came from the pinto beans when they were simmering. That's why you add fresh boiling water because this I believe has got a lot of starch in it which you don't really want with your pinto beans. There's going to be enough in there as it is and it doesn't look too nice. So we put fresh uh, water in. I'm not showing you the dial because I no longer use the dial. I have these jiggler weights and for my altitude it's 10 pounds of pressure. So when this is uh, heated up and a steady stream of steam is coming out of there, time it for 10 minutes before you put your jiggler, your weight on. Don't know if the camera makes this out. Can you see that said steady stream of steam coming out of the vent pipe? Now we need to leave it for 10 minutes so it can completely vent. During which time, if it hasn't come up before, your overpressure plug at the back will come up. It's now had its 10 minutes, so I'm going to put the jiggler weight on and wait till it comes up to a good dance. As you can see now, it's just started jiggling, doing a little shin jump. So I'll lower the temperature and try and keep it to just a little shimmy down. Do this gradually. You don't have to do it all at once. And I will put the, my timer on for 75 minutes and make sure that that cooler dancer is dancing. My husband thinks it sounds like my can is shaking maracas. But keep it at that for 75 minutes. When it's had its time, you can turn the heat off, but you must leave that weight on. Let it completely cool down naturally by itself. Don't try and cool it down any faster until that overpressure plug at the back drops down. The timer has just gone off for my large canner, which has got the pinto beans and chickpeas in. So I've turned the heat off under it and I'm just leaving it. This stops jiggling more or less straight away. But this overpressure plug is what you want to drop down, which tells you there's no pressure inside of there. So when you've turned your heat, you've done your processing time, you've turned your heat off, leave it. Yeah, so I've got my little kind of going next to, to it. That's got roughly an hour to go, because uh, I've only just started it. But uh, leave yours once you've turned the heat under it, let it cool down by itself. My little canner is still going, but the canner that's got the pinto beans and chickpeas in has now come down to pressure because I've just heard that overpressure plug drop. Now this should not spurt steam when you move it, and it doesn't. So you can take it off by hitting it from the other one and you can't see any steam coming out. Now, leave it for a couple of minutes. I don't normally do this, but I'm getting some sadness in mind. I normally just take them straight out because they've 
cracking the lids down with having catalyst. But this time I'm going to leave them because we do recommend that you leave them for up to five minutes. So that's what I'm going to do. And then you open it and lift it away from yourself. So I think I'll show you that now. And then let them sit. Right, so twist it and that's unlocked it. Lift it away from you. Can you see all that smoke uh, steam? You don't want that in your face. And I'm just leaving the lid there on the top for a few minutes. I'll get them out and crank the lid down because they're catalysts. Right, I don't normally do this, show you uh, me cracking down the tackle lids, but I'm going to today. I have this oven glove, which is an actual glove. Um, and it's got a sticky stuff on it. I've only got the one and these microfiber cloths. I'll do it with these chickpeas first of all. And then the pinto beans but this is the same method i hold it with the gloved hand because it's got the non-slip stuff on and then just turn it down turn it round and that's it that's all the rest to it again hold with the glove and turn. So there are the pinto beans. I've got eight jars of pinto beans and four jars of the um, chickpeas gobanzo beans. Thank you. Bye. It's a perfect